Seems like a foxhole with the radio dead. Welcome to Society of Nova Spiritus Sunday Service. For new viewers, Society of Nova Spiritus was founded by the late Sylvia Brown. Novus is Sylvia's monument to God, a forum to express the joy and love that is God, with no fear, no guilt, no sin, no hell, and no Satan. Through Novus, Sylvia gives the world a means to understand God, life, and the reason for being. You can read more details on our website at novus.org. Welcome, I'm the host, Reverend Tom Bigley. Uh, you can learn more about me by watching previous videos and listening to the New Spirit Radio podcast or vlog, however you like to describe that uh, activity. Um, oh, quick question. What first anniversary was October 27th of 2022? Well, I'll tell you in the announcement, so listen, listen up for the announcements later. A uh, quick outline. Uh, grab your communion edibles, as in a little cracker thing to eat and uh, some form of your favorite juice. Sit back, relax, and visualize that we're all gathered in a small auditorium and enjoy our regular Sunday service. Oh, prayers are in the description, so you're welcome to read along or follow, read and follow along or, or listen as, as I read them for you. Uh, today's speakers are Larry Beck and Sylvia Brown. I'll start out with a candle lighting for the, to open the service. Uh, I'll read the opening prayer. I introduce the speakers and then we get to listen to them. Uh, they, oh, Sylvia's doing the meditation today. Uh, and then I'll do the, I'll say the communion prayer. Then we participate together in communion. I'll say the healing prayer. Uh, then I'll talk about announcements and collections. And then uh, petitions and testimonials. We'll ask about that. Uh, we'll have a short moment of silence for special prayers. And, uh, oh, then we all participate in the benediction. Uh, from there, I conclude with the closing prayer and blow out the candle. So let's see, we have, oh, there it is right there, the instructions, candles. So if you've got one and it's appropriate at where you're at too, feel free to uh, light a candle. Make sure this one's going to light here. Come on. Here we go. Oh, low torch. Huh. I hope this one's going to work for the whole duration here because some of these they like go out because they don't get enough of the wax hot but anyway that's another well we'll see <laughs> we'll see when I'm done here got it uh, let's see so welcome to the Society of Nova Spiritus good morning everyone um, you're we encourage people even in when we were in person um, silence your cell phones. Uh, you know, this is a time for you. It's like making yourself an appointment uh, to be for you. Uh, we also uh, invite everyone uh, to do a friendship greeting. So if you've got a group, if you're in with a group right now, um, stop and say, hi, how are you? Uh, great to see you. You know, you can turn to your left or right and, and uh, greet that person that's sitting next to you. Uh, let's see. Now, we come together to pay homage to Mother and Father God as we support one another in our search for truth. But uh, when we are, yep, we're doing what needs to get done here. Uh, uh, normally, we do collect petitions. However, um, what we do is we're going to put those in and participate in the special prayers. Um, you know, normally when we are in person, we would gather them up. You can write your petitions yourself and... Um, uh, you can also, what's the right word, release that energy to the universe. And I'll describe some more of that here in a little bit. These petitions are private between you and God. No one ever uh, reads what you've written. And then the petitions are taken after service and are either burned or shredded, depending on your location and what's appropriate. And, and of course, uh, I was saying, this is symbolic of giving your uh, request to the power of the universe. And of course, then uh, the ashes can, or the shreddings, can either be placed, uh, usually placed in a, in a garden. Uh, uh, 
And now I want to share with you the opening prayer. Again, you can uh, read along in the description or uh, just listen along as I, I share uh, the opening prayer. Dear Father and Mother God, please bless our efforts in this renewed religion. Let the new spirit of enlightenment rinse out all guilt and fear. We come to you, God, knowing that you know our name, knowing that you know our hearts, minds, and souls. We want to learn our lessons so that we can make the journey of life easier, so that we can perfect faster than we have throughout all our lives. From this moment on, we will love ourselves and others and let your supreme love light the lamp of our souls. We will be imbued with love and judgment of will to get us on track and keep us on our perfection scheme. We will truly be a light in a lonely desert that enlightens many. Amen. Arem Shem Beth Sadal Sakavilian Ahad. And the translation is, Blessed be this queen on high who is sacred to all who come to her. Ah, here's the fun. Now, listen as Larry Beck and Sylvia Brown provide us with, with spiritual knowledge and their unique no-nonsense humor. Uh, let's see. We've got... Pardon, pardon me here for a moment. Um, cool. Here we go. This is a classic of um, Larry Beck and Sylvia Brown from actually 1994. Today is my great privilege to introduce our speakers, Larry Beck, administrator. I noticed that in the front of the thing, administrator. So he's going to administer to you, of course. Um, and of course, our founder, Sylvia Brown. Indeed, Roger, I second the opinion. It's, uh of you, of course, and Wanda. It's great to be back. We've been gone a couple weeks now. What a pleasure. I always am delighted to see your faces again. It's, it's truly, for myself and Sylvia both, uh, a, a joy to come back. We miss you. We truly do. And um, yes, the phone book, I've read it, Roger, and <laughs> a lot of great characters, but the plot's a little thin. <laughs> it's worth reading, though. Welcome to Novus. Why are we different? Because, well, of people like Roger and myself. But certainly <laughs> Sylvia adds a big deal. Uh, <clears throat> I would like to comment on the song we just did, Dare to Dream. And those who know the history of, of Sylvia's life and this mission she's on, for God, literally, might recall that one of my personal dreams was to be with her in, in every way. And, of course, most of you know that that will occur come September 11. And so, yes, dare to dream. No matter what seems too far away, you can attain it. And uh, besides, isn't the journey the important part? But if you can actually achieve a goalpost, that's cool, too. So I have that honor of living that song, uh, certainly in my personal life. But enough about me. Let's go on to something more interesting. Uh, our faith, our knowledge, if you will, our gnosis. And because we do have new people, I do want to spell that. Gnosis is spelled with a G, but it's silent. And the Greek word for knowledge, Gnostic, again, silent G, big G, silent G, means we seek knowledge, means we try and strive towards and reach for knowledge. And what that does automatically dispels ignorance. You cannot coexist with knowledge and ignorance. Ignorance comes from the Latin ignoramus, meaning ignoring truth. Ignoramus, ignoring truth. My Latin teacher helped. Thank you. <laughs> <clears throat> The Latin I know is e pluribus unum. So come on, a break. And e tu brute, but that's another story. So we as Gnostics seek truth, and we encourage everybody here to do likewise. 
Now, oddly enough, that makes us into the strange position of having a church that doesn't really need to have a church because truly your individual journey is the important thing for your life, for your perfection, and for the enhancement of God's knowledge. Your journey is the critical element. What you do is important. And so many times we think, am I doing the right thing? Just by asking that question, you can be assured that you are doing the right thing. And even if it's not fun, you know that it has a point and a purpose eventually. And it seems like we don't see the point to most of life's tribulation until after the fact. But that's okay, too. Know always in your heart that you're not a sinner. Know always in your heart that no matter what, God loves you. Know always in your heart, regardless of what you've been programmed into before, that you personally can touch God. You do not need an intermediary. You do not need somebody to define a list of rules. And of course, the list of rules that we have seen in our culture can hardly be followed. For example, thou shalt not kill. Generally, we think that's a fine rule, isn't it? But take it literally. It implies you cannot do what? Eat. If you eat, something exchanges their energy with you, and they die. But you see, even in Lion King, I was pleased as punch, because there's a lot of, uh, you know, how people rile up no matter what happens in this world. Lion King was a great film. They were all worried about the scene with the bad lion hurting the good lion. Okay, that's fine. But it was done tastefully. But my favorite was when Papa Lion says to Baby Lion, the circle of life. And the circle of life included the lions eating the antelope and all that. But Lion King said it perfectly. We are all in a great circle of life. So what we do is, yes, we hunt. But when we die, we go back to the grasses, and the grasses then are eaten by the other animals. The circle of life is so obvious and, and proper that if you even study the basics of nature, watch how animals act in the world, how naturally they live, generally for the moment, and just go about their business. And they are, I believe, models of how we too can act. If we just do what we're supposed to do. And how do you find that out? Go within. Look inside, feel this psychic sense, and seek truth. It is an enormously simple task to live a good life. You are challenged to make choices a lot, but it's never unclear about the choices because you review your heart and your motive and just ask the question of your own mind. And God will give you an answer. Then the choice becomes yours. And that's why when we say we seek truth and knowledge, we seek our own directive out of our heart. And that's God's will, truly God's will, because you are God. You are part of God. And we all make up the enormity of God. And you have a lot of tools to get you through the hard times. Everybody here has embarked on their own spiritual quest and journey. And it seems like as soon as you take up that flag and say, I am seeking my own truth in my own way, in a loving way, the world, I don't know, puts a big bullseye on you. And expect a lot of slings and arrows of outrageous fortune. But take those slings and arrows as compliments to you. And the compliment goes like this. So you think you're good, huh? Well... We'll test you. And boy, does the world test you. But the pride of surviving, and that's all you need to do, that's everything you need to do is keep standing, persevere, go forward with what you know is right. Don't give in to the 
people that would tell you to stop. Keep on. It's the only technique you need to know. Now, we do have a lot of friends on the way, and Sylvia loves to tell people how we walk around with a crowd of assistants, guides, archetypes, mother and father God both, of course, and all your lights and colors and shiny swords. We like to use these things to help us through. And we have great books, and please look at them in the back. Most of you have them. We have great books about how to get through the life easier. But remember the, the fundamental truth. God loves you. You're not a sinner. And there's no hellfire and brimstone. And there is no Satan. So don't listen to those who say there is. That's a false god. We do not worship false gods. Not here. And it's my pleasure, and if you would join with me now in welcoming the best spokesperson for God on this planet, I think, Sylvia Brown. He's not prejudiced, though. <laughs> I find it to be um, so heartwarming that when we went to Ohio, uh, I don't know whether it's Midwestern or what it is, but people there are so also hungry for this knowledge. We had probably a bigger wouldn't you say, the people that were on the phones, a bigger upsurge from Cleveland than I have from some of the other states that I've been in. I think it also has to do with the fact that the world is becoming very tired. The people in it are becoming very tarnished by everything that they've heard. Because let's face it, this is a world in which society has failed us, religion has failed us in many cases, and certainly the whole government issue sometimes have failed us. So we're sort of in a foxhole, like I say to some of my clients, with our radios dead a lot of times. I agree with Larry. We don't need a church, but we need a community. And that's what brings me to the Qumran. And those of you that may be hearing for the first time, I'll try to be not so erudite about it is that we really believe what the original Essenes and Gnostics of which Christ belonged to. And I will repeat again that Christ was not a Christian. He couldn't have followed himself, so be smart about that. You know, what, become Brownites or whatever the hell it is or something. No. So we truly are Gnostics because we follow exactly what he was taught, what he believed, and what he followed. It's an interesting thing to note that within his own community, he was fighting a horrific fundamentalist code. And the fundamentalist was not only separated by another group of not so much Gnostics, but this almost rabid group of um, fundamentalists within his own rank. Now let me explain to you how that went. John the Baptist was from a priestly heritage, even though they were cousins, first cousins. Anne and Mary were um, sisters. He was descendant by bloodline of the royal house of David. The Gnostic sect went, it's, it's a terrible thing when you have a, a you know, speech impediment like a lisp, S-E-C-T-S. Um, is that he was fighting not only against this priestly group over here, his own cousin, but he was always also fighting the Judaic culture at the time. The priestly culture was teaching that there would have been a man come, a Messiah, who was going to free all the people from the Roman rule, the same as Joshua and Daniel in the Bible had said. Christ comes and says, no, I want to give back people their own God center. I want to destroy this old law. I want to give people sanction that every one of them can be priestly and loving and dispense grace freely. You can imagine what that did 
for the hierarchy who wanted to have a lot of tithing. If you make people administrative to themselves, you don't need a hierarchy. And if you don't need a hierarchy, you don't build big fancy temples. And through all these years, not all of us, but some and the majority have bought into that. No, I have to give a lots of money. Not that it wouldn't be nice, but like I said, we can meet anywhere because we're a community, we're a community of beings. We're a spiritual community of people. So it wouldn't matter if we put a tent out there, we'd still meet. Because I don't think God cares if there's gold on the altar or not, do you think? It's like this man who's predicting, like I told at Trellis the other night, predicting the end of the world and he gets $12 million a day. Well, if the world's going to end, he doesn't need it, does he? <laughs> so why doesn't he give it all out to the homeless so between now and September they can have a hell of a good time? I don't understand it. And people send it in. Now tell me what kind of a mind that is. See, what I think is the biggest evil we have is ignorance. And let's follow that by stupidity. And it's not necessarily our fault. It's easier, like I've told you so many times, to give your soul up to somebody. Hey, handle this. I have my rules, I'll live by them, and I'll go to heaven. Sure, we'll all get to heaven, but what level do you want to be on? Do you want to go over there and just be stupid again? And then, or have to come back into life and be dumber than before? That's depressing. And that is the rule. Because if you don't get it right the first time, although it's a wonderful thing, you have to keep coming down and doing it again. Look. Now, interestingly enough, Christ was in total rebuttal to the Old Testament. That's why I find it to be so amazing that both, the, both of these sections of books are together. Because in one part, like I was telling my Bible class the other night, is that in Deuteronomy it says if a man has his genital smashed, he can never get into heaven. Now Christ turns around and says even a eunuch, even a man by physical demeanor, doesn't matter, or spiritually, he can get into heaven. Do you realize what the Judaic and the fundamentalist population said to this, or how they looked at that as this rabble-rousing person that said, you're all God and you're all good? How dare him, they say, said, that he could say such a thing. He also said, you don't have to work, or you can work on the Sabbath. Oh, they called him a blasphemer. They called him the wicked priest. Do you know this? They called him the wicked priest. He also gave out to everyone. You don't have to, when he took out, off the money changers, he said, and this is what, of course, Martin Luther was doing in the Lutheran religion. He said, you cannot have these money changers there and have them pay for salvation. And he kicked over the tables. He said, oh, he's a true blasphemer. We've got to do something. Now, see, he was sort of the type of man in which if he just walked amongst his own group and didn't stir up anything, probably nothing would have happened. But because he had such charisma, he drew crowds, and people began little bands at first, and then, and then this, these people that administered to the other people and did healing. And he said, we can't have that this little bunch of ragamuffins running around the world preaching love. Well, how can we have that? Now, interesting that in the Quamron community, which was the Gnostic community, that was a name for it, Quamron community, is they call themselves, when they were outside their community, the way. They said, we are the way. And the reason why they said we are the way is because it was their way to get people to God. Even his Sermon on the Mount, as I've told my people so many times, was all directed towards God. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. He said the kingdom of God is within you. Now how many times, even in your most Tiniest recollection, did you hear the phrase coming from Christ or written that it came from Christ? I am the way, the truth, and the light. You all heard that, haven't you? All right, that's repeated over and over again. Now, when you take it and you do the Pesher method, which is a way of reading 
the uh, Dead Sea Scrolls, which are now blasting upon the world of Christianity, and everybody's going, boo, and something we've always known, and we say no big deal, because we're, we've followed Christ anyway to the letter of the law, his teachings, his love, his belief. The truth was him, and the light were his bishops, and the people that he put under his tutelage, which was everyone, were called the light. Now look how he made that a trinity. The way, I'm teaching the way, the truth is what I am here to stand for, he said, and the light are my bishops and ministers that are going to go out and tell you how you can do this, that you can heal, that you can give hope and help to people. It's wonderful if you are of the cloth, but even if you aren't, because that's a, that's a heavy-duty oath to give your life to God. It really is heavy-duty, and you don't take that back lightly. You just don't always, all of a sudden say one day, I don't want to do that. No, no. There's very few things in life that hold, but that's one of them. That's a contract written in gold between you and God. I vow to you, God, today, I will live my life, da, da, da. You had better live by it. It doesn't mean you can't fall off the rung, but you get back on the ladder again. So through all of this, the beauty is that we do believe that you live a good life. And what does good mean? I had a professor used to say to me, he's gone now, he used to say to me, Sylvia, good does not denote anything. I said, it certainly doesn't denote bad. And what does good mean for each and every one of us? There is a universal law that governs us, that we're going to try to live without fear, first of all. You might say, well, that's a funny thing to say. No, it isn't, because fear destroys love. And this world is filled with fear. It was then. Do you realize that in that point in time when John the Baptist, rabble-rousing through the group, was predicting the end of the earth with brimstone and fire. And they said, this man of love coming along is a dissident. John the Baptist said this. And that's why he hoped to get him in his own camp. That's why he baptized him. Because at that point in time, when Christ came on the scene of his public life, John the Baptist had hundreds and thousands of people following him. Christ came and with his love drew them all away drew them all away. And John the Baptist, I don't want to make John the Baptist out as a bad person because he believed what he was doing was right. And actually, he was working in his own fundamental way. But see, the fundamentalist should realize that the fundamental truth is that Christ was love. He also believed in a mother and father God. Fright. You mean to tell me there's only a not only just a male God, there could be a feminine counterpart to God. <gasps> Blaspheming. That's why we have the resurrection of the mother God. She's always been there. She just was buried for so long. So all we know is that she was certainly alive and well in every other tradition except the Western world. Whether it's in Kenya they believe in the feminine principle of God, a female goddess. All of the religions in the world believe, even if it's Siddhartha, Buddhist, the Lady of the Lotus was a counterpart of. We get over here and it became patriarchal and it became dogmatic and it became rigid and it, be it became almost Calvinistic in its approach, which means you don't have a prayer. You're not going to make it anyway. See, the Calvinistic approach that broke out was you're already determined to go to heaven or hell anyway, so it doesn't matter what you do. That's, that's a happy thought, isn't it? So, you know, you're doomed from the beginning. So talk about killing initiative. That didn't last long, but it certainly made an imprint upon the mind of the Western world, not because we're stupid, it's because it's constantly bombarding. Take the channel and turn it on Sunday mornings. People are raging, pounding, screaming, dancing, doing, 
and then asking you please to keep their ministry by sending whatever you can. And you get a prayer cloth or something. I don't know whatever it is. And people do it. And it's because it's not their fault. They're afraid. And because it does take time to research and learn and listen. And I always think, what if one of those people were to really read and learn and then challenge? What then would happen? But you see, people don't because it's not within their nature. Unless they get a group around them to challenge, then they do. Then they do. Now, Christ was felled within his own group, strangely enough, because it becomes the point of least resistance, doesn't it? Not to stand up for what we believe in. Because it's easy not to take part in something that's truth. It really is. It's like, please don't see me today because I know that there's a truth, but I don't want to address it because it takes a lot of effort. I'm telling you now, you must take the effort to find the truth that is your God within you. That wondrous God center that's there, the Christ consciousness, the mother God center that's there waiting. And what do you do? Do you have to fall down on your knees and go through a big baptism and have somebody? No. What you have to do is acceptance of. That, first of all, that you're a wonderful person, that you don't need to have fear about everything. We have people that have fear, and I'm not talking about, because we have people that have fear of airplanes and heights and all those things, but I'll tell you what the biggest one is. We were talking to a person that was in psychology the other day, and I thought to myself, damn, all of these fears could be boiled into one little bitty pot. Do you know what it would be? I will not any longer exist. There's the ultimate. And whether you realize it or not, if you have a fear of claustrophobia, if you have a fear of heights, your whole fear is something will happen to me. That's where it's from. If you have fears sitting there about your children, it's the pain you will suffer if something happens. Don't you see? And when you look beyond this horizon, that this life is so temporal, that it is not fair, that it has injustices abounding every minute, and yet you're struggling through it, and you're going to stand tall, and you're going to be brave, and you're going to walk in the footsteps of Christ, and you're going to accept the God center that God is a loving God who made you, you'll get through it. And while you're getting through it, you are going to experience for God because you're part of that divine. You're the fingers of one hand, but you're all fingers. And that's what makes it so glorious. That's what makes it easy hard. The hard part comes in, I will try to rinse out fear. I will walk in the footsteps of my Lord. I will keep my eye on the beautiful Asna Mother Goddess. I will know that she intercedes and helps me and stands behind me and puts her mantle of love around me. I will know that Father God is there and wishes the best for me, but it's not his or her fault that I wrote this dumb contract out. But I did it with pure motive because I wanted to learn for God. I wanted to learn for God, and that's what we lose. And so we have death, and we have destruction, and we have Zaire, and we have, and it's not that we're going to be ostriches. It's get through it, love those people, send them energy, have sympathy, caring. Try to do the best you can for all those that are around you to help. And that's it, that's, that's it. Not all of us can just go, would like to, go flying off in an airplane with lots of food because most of us don't even have enough for ourselves. But we'd love to be able to do it. If you can't do it, then send energy to those that are. Because no matter where you look on the news, there's something horrible going on somewhere. 
And if you look directly in your life, not to be negative, there's usually something horrible going on there. And people will say to me so many times, Sylvia, with all that you hear, this will seem silly to you. Mm -mm. No, it doesn't. Whatever is important to you is important. Because we all have a relation to suffering that is only equal by what we can deal with. I know you don't believe that, but it's true. As long as you stand. And as long as you quit worrying about if somebody's going to share it with you. Please, please stop that. It doesn't mean that we don't want companions along the way, but don't make that the thrust of your whole life. Can you imagine going to the other side, sitting in the Hall of Wisdom and saying to your guides, and it's never a judgment, but can you imagine saying, so it's a brainstorming thing. So the guide may say to us when we're in the Hall of Wisdom, when we're sitting over there, so how would you have liked to have spent your life? Now you're looking at your whole life, and all you see is that you whined and wimped around about fighting somebody else in your life and everybody else parading by that you could have loved and given to. No. You were looking for a Miss Right or Mr. Right. And so all the beauty of life. Will you quit getting so monofocused about that? Of course we want companions along the way, but what about friendships and children and relatives and all that that are part of our life? No, I don't want that. I don't want that. I want my soulmate. You're not going to get it in this life. We don't get soulmates in this life. I don't care what nutcase you want to go to that's talking about twin flames and whatever the hell that is all of a sudden. Your soulmate's on the other side protecting you. Certainly you want somebody in your life. And if you quit bitching about it, you'll get it. <laughs> they interviewed me the other day for the paper. And the girl said to me, darling girl, what made me a little bit depressed, so she said, I was following you since I was a little girl. And she's, you know, I don't know what that is about. When I was about two, and now I'm 80 or something. I don't know. <laughs> she said, what's the number one question to ask? And that doesn't mean I don't want you to ask me the question, because I think it's very important. But the, still, overall, we could have famine, plague, and wild animals at our door, and then still the number one question is, where is the singular person in my life? And don't you realize that you get so fearful? And that means full of fear. I will be alone. I got news for you. You already are. No one's living in here with you except God. No one is intrinsically in your body. And that's what so many, many people want. And they get fearful if they don't. What if I grow old alone? What if I'm rejected and dejected? So you don't have very long before you go to the other side. And then you won't be. It's sort of like the chicken pox. Somebody says, how long will you have it? Two weeks. I don't want it two weeks. I'm sorry, but that's the way it is. You've got to get through it. And to find joy in all the other things gets rid of fear. Because if you have love, if you have the Christ consciousness, Mother and Father God, you don't have room. You don't have room to have fear. I don't want to die of a horrible death. I don't want to do this. I don't want to do that. I don't want to have a, a car accident. I, yeah, no one wants to do that. That's not a thing that we want necessarily to do in this life. But if those things happen, you go home. That's what I said. The little pot that boils is annihilation. The fear of not existing anymore. And the fear of the hurt that would come from that. It's not possible. It never has been and never will be. Your spirit and soul and glorified body goes on. And I think it would be so nice to be able to sit over there at the scanning machine with your guide and say, God, I really made use of my life. See, no one says bad you. You say bad you. You say bad you in this life. But there, it's much more happier. Because it's sort of like, well, I did it wrong that time, but I'm going to try it again. Oh, please, 
let's do it right this time. I don't want to be sitting over there saying, damn, I didn't do enough for people. I didn't help enough. I didn't give enough. I don't want to say that. People say, if you keep on this way, they'll say to all of you, not just me, you're going to burn out. Oh, but my friends, what a glorious flame it would be. Wow. And so, yeah, do the best we can. Do it right so we don't have to come back here. Yes, most of us should be doing, you know, what, the best we can. We're not complaining so much. and uh, But just it's encouragement as well. Um, let's see. I wanted to ah uh, jump into the meditation. So this one is a meditation uh, with Sylvia. Uh, from this actual Sunday service. Uh, however, I wanted to give a quick preface here just to, you know, take a, a moment here. Um, uh, we encourage for, you know, meditation. We encourage you to sit with your feet flat on the floor when your palms upward on your lap to receive that wonderful grace and uh, healing energy uh, during the uh, meditation. So take a moment, uh, find a comfortable place to sit with your feet flat on the floor and palms upward, and um, here comes the, the meditation. Okay, we're going to get ready now for meditation. Put your hands upward on your thighs. We always do this because we don't do this because it makes a negative circle, and we want to get receive grace from God, so we open it up. Dear God, surround us today with the white light of the Holy Spirit. The love between mother and father God that's descending upon our hearts today. That we're gonna rinse out all the programmed fear, even vengeance and malice, sometimes which are a human thing, but we don't need them anymore. Tie up all those loose ends. The burnout butts, they say, of our hopes and our dreams and our wishes and stick with the reality of what we are today. And in the midst of all this pea soup fog that we walk through, all the nattering that goes on, all of a sudden it parts. Everything becomes clear, crystal clear. I am good. I am sanctioned by God. I have been made by God. I'm made in the image and likeness of Mother and Father God. And I see myself transcending. I see my soul bright, clear, full of love for every human being. I'm in the state now of not being afraid. I'm in the state of non-judgment. I'm in the state of a reality check once and for all that this imprint of God is upon me, that God loves me. And when I follow that path of love and truth, not hope, because hope carries no power, it can be empty, but truth carries with it power because it takes you directly into the heart of God. Journey is short. No matter how long you live, you want to make the best of it. Yes, there's rocks. Yes, there's bramble bushes. But the journey is worth it. Because you're going to graduate with honors, without all those trappings. Everybody graduates anyway, but who wants to take with you all the trappings, all the heavy load? We're going to travel light now. Our souls are going to be light. And how we travel light is we get rid of all the dogma, the fear, we have enough evil people in the world not to worry about a devil. We have dark people in the world, dark inside, not skinned, that try to do us harm. Those are the people that we have to protect against. Silver netting our life, catching all the negativity and ab absorbing it, dissolving it, so we can walk fresh, clean, and then the holiness of God's light. We feel the spirit move 
We feel illnesses dissolve. We feel fear go away and love comes and sits with us, in us, around us, by us. And all the angels, all the guides, all the archetypes make this beautiful circle of silver around us. Protection, love. You're never alone from that, ever. It's you and God, quietly, the greatest lover of all, what we've been searching for in every face we meet is God. And once you search in the eyes of another person, you'll find that parts of your search have ended because there's sparks of God in most everyone. Bring yourself up, feeling absolutely marvelous, in a state of comfort and love. And God bless you and keep you safe. Well, <laughs> um, are you, did you come back? Uh, yeah, take a moment and kind of Pull yourself, we'll pull ourselves together and, and uh, uh, yeah, talk about rejuvenation and um, the the nice thing, doing that enough time. You know, if you're new to Novus, uh, the fun part is, you know, when you, you've listened enough that um, eventually your soul says, oh, I'm not alone. Uh, you know, I'm still connected to God. Yes, unfortunately, our physical body encourages us to pay attention to what's here, that this is all there is, but yet we know, you know, we learn eventually that spiritually, um, we're, you know, this isn't all there is. What we're seeing in front of us uh, isn't all there is. There's, you know, Mother God, Father God, and so on, and our guides and the archetypes and the angels and everybody on the other, on the other side. So it's like you can't, <laughs> eventually you can't feel alone because, uh, it may just seem crowded. Who you know? Who, who could be standing around? You know, behind you. So fun, uh, um, fun learning and a, a you know lesson for the soul. Uh, next is the communion prayer. Um, um, so yeah, grab your communion edibles and hang out for a moment here. Well, um, typically you know in person, so you can visualize what uh, um, you know an in person. Uh, services like two ministers stand and hold the communion trays uh, to one side while the minister, a minister would stand in the middle and uh, uh, say the, say the communion prayer. Uh, yes, the wine we usually serve, usually, no, we typically serve wine that's non-alcoholic. Everyone is welcome to participate and uh, I invite you now to uh, join me in the communion prayer. Again, you can read along. Uh, the prayers are in the comments or uh, listen. So the communion prayer. Dear Father and Mother God, we ask you to witness this communion, which is a symbol of finding our own God-centeredness and Christ consciousness. In doing this action of taking bread and wine, we are impressing on our higher consciousness that we are dedicating our lives to God's will. The symbol of this communion for us through Nova Spiritus means we wish to be born into the new spirit of true spirituality and let go of all the guilt and karma of our past lives and start fresh and new. From this time forward, we will be on track, fulfilling our themes and walking with the blessed aura of God's light. We do this as an activation of our will, to symbolize to ourselves and the world that we walk in grace and free of all negativity. We ask this in your name. Amen. Arem, Shem, Beth Sidal, Sacravillian, Ahad. Now, grab your edibles and we'll participate together here. I have my tortilla chip. And my favorite juice is 
ginger beer. And of course, I need that aerated just a bit because it catches the ginger. Um, if I take it too too quickly out of the fresh out of the bottle or the can, it burns the back of my throat, and it's like <gasps> anyway, fun. Ah, next the healing prayer. So if you like, you know, for for praying. Uh, typically, we sit, um, you know, sit with our feet flat on the floor just as we meditate. We also sit uh, with our hands palm upward in our lap um, while we pray as well. And the healing prayer. Dear Father and Mother God, we are all gathered here to love you and to receive your blessing and healing energies. We ask that you send your everlasting energy to heal our hearts. Heal all who are in need today, using the healing force that you, as our omnipotent parents, can provide. Send us all the power and force of your energy and love to heal us all, to sustain us all in our everyday lives, so that we can continue to experience for you. Help us remain examples of your love and guide us back to you if ever we go astray from our chosen paths. Loving Mother and Father, Help all of our guides to channel your energy and the energy of the archetypes that surround this gathering in your name, so that the energy sent is received fully and completely in each and every one of us. For those loved ones that are unable to gather with us today, we also ask that you send them your healing energy and love, so that any malady, whether it be mental or physical, be completely healed and eliminated. We ask for this in your name, Mother and Father, the name of God, Amen. Arem Shem Beth Sidal Sacrivillian Ahad. Uh, now's the time for collections, and let's see. We've reached that portion of our service where we ask for your support. Before submitting your contribution, please take a moment to thank Mother and Father God for the abundance in your life and to request this abundance continue to come into your life. We thank you for your support of this church by your heartfelt donations given when you can. And of course, you can donate uh, directly to the website, <clears throat> or uh, if you want to donate and get something, you can start a study group. Uh, uh, yeah, start a study group, which is, uh, you can go to our website and find out more information, or buy a book, uh, if you buy a book by calling the office, uh, those those proceeds go directly to Novus. Or if you like to get something and donate, you can sign up for Amazon Smile and tell them that you would like your proceeds to go to the Society of Nova Spiritus. So some quick announcements here. Short, well, sort of short. Um, as our one of our... Um, um, ministers, ministers, no, actually Cardinal, um, who's passed away years ago, uh, several years ago, but um, I wanted to reiterate um, what Enid would tell us many times uh, this time of year, you know, when these times come about, get out and vote. Doesn't matter, you know, who, what, how, it's, you know, we're seekers after our own truth, but it is important to get out and vote. Now, to answer the question from earlier, what first anniversary was October 27 of 2022? Well, it turns out it was the New Spirit Radio uh, show being live for the first time on Facebook and YouTube. Uh, we had transitioned from being strictly a, um, a uh, what is it, podcast, but we took all that uh, format and jumped onto Facebook and YouTube for fun. And uh, uh, we're able to, you know, able to get that, make that available for more people. So that's been a fun, and it's been, oh my gosh, I was just looking back at um, when we started, or thinking about it, and I, then I dawned on me, that's, you know, we've just passed our, our nine-year anniversary uh, for the show. Uh, so yes, you can find us on Facebook, on YouTube, uh, on Wednesday evenings at 6 p.m., 
um, Pacific time, regardless of daylight or whatever. Um, uh, but yeah, 6 p.m. Um, Pacific time is when we're live on Facebook and YouTube. But, you know, there's the archives, the, the um, you know, all the... Uh, all the past shows are archived on Facebook and YouTube for your uh, enjoyment and review. Uh, a little bit about, oh, so if you like to participate in our special uh, um, prayer ceremony, uh, we, part we uh, provide a novena uh, towards the end of the New Spirit Radio Show. So check us out uh, to participate in that. Uh, and of course, we conclude with a prayer by Sylvia. Recently, uh, we have been learning from, let's see, who's, who's, oh, Francine. We've been learning from Francine of, about genetic, genetic research, uh, helping with cancer and AIDS and MS. Uh, that, you know, this was back from, did I put in the year? Well, this was back uh, a while ago when it was recorded, but to give you some uh, preface of what um, um, her prophecy of uh, telling us what's coming up uh, 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 in the near future at the time. Also, talking about warlike past lives that cause current stress. Uh, well, you know, the discussion is talking about cell memory, and you'll learn more about that. Oh, also, examples of different past life traumas. Uh, what, how that manifests itself in, and can manifest, it, manifest itself in this lifetime. Let's see. Oh, Chris Dufresne, Sylvia's son. He's been doing live YouTubes. So, uh, you know, watch, join. Uh, he's been on YouTube live. Uh, he's also doing posts on Instagram. Uh, and you can check out more on his website at chrisrightnow.com. Uh, and of course, um, Society of Nova Spiritus uh, is on Facebook and YouTube. That's where this uh, video is being posted at the same, you know, simultaneously. Uh, also, you can watch the past Sunday service videos. So share. I encourage that so uh, you know it gets out to other people. Share, like, subscribe, click on the bell so you get notified when new items come out, uh, such as this video. Uh, also, there um, we also provide um, Ellen Schloss, Reverend Ellen Schloss, provides a special Zoom service. Uh, if you'd like to participate or be invited to that, put your email in the website, novus.org, and you'll get a notice uh, and invitation uh, to, to participate in that. Uh, let's see, we've got that. Now we come to petitions and testimonials. Um, let's see, you can do your own, uh, again, you, know, you can do your own uh, petitions. Uh, it's just getting it written out. And, and what was just coming to mind is, you know, Fran uh, Francine, no, <laughs> Asna wants to be audited. So keep track of, of what you've asked for uh, over time. Uh, and, but to, you know, writing out petitions, you can write it on paper or whatever, whatever gives ceremony to you. Uh, and you can either, you know, burn the paper or shred it. And, and it's just... What is ceremonial to you to get that energy out to the universe? Of course, you can always... Pardon me. <laughs> My desk is falling apart here. Um, you can always go to uh, the website and place uh, concerns in the prayer chain, if you'd like. Uh, those, again, when whenever we are saying, hey, we're sending out energy to the universe for people's healing, uh, you know, we include those as well. Uh, so now I encourage, uh, and right along those lines, uh, it's a time for a moment of silence uh, I, that we send out that energy for those that are, you know have those special prayer requests or have created their own petition. So let's take a moment of silence. We're going to um, ask for um, healing or financial or, um, you know, whatever's ailing. Uh, and or if you can think of somebody, you know, just watch the news. You can, if you can think of somebody that you would like to uh, send energy to, you know, healing energy to uh, and get help. Uh, so let's take a moment and we'll say, OK, hit it.
Amen. Now is the time for the benediction. Now, this is the truest form of sacrament uh, or sacred oath used by Gnostics at Qumran of years of centuries ago. It's led by a minister, uh, and this is not written in the um, description. However, uh, so basically you're going to repeat after me. I'm going to say a phrase, and you're going to repeat that phrase after me, and I'll do my best to save time for you um, as we go through this. So our traditional Gnostic blessing. So again, repeat after me. Blessed be God the Father. Blessed be his holy name. Blessed be the name of Asna. Blessed be her holy name. Blessed be the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be his holy name. Blessed be the name of our founder, Sylvia Brown. Blessed be her holy name. Blessed be the archetypes that protect us. Blessed be their holy names. Blessed be our spirit guides. Blessed be all their names, all their holy names. Blessed be everyone here today. Blessed be all our names. Blessed be our loved ones not present. Blessed be all their names. Amen. Arem Shem Beth Sadal Sacrivalian Ahad. And the translation is Blessed be this Queen on high who is sacred to all who come to her. Uh, let's see. Let's make sure I'm still functioning here, probably. <laughs> My desk had fallen apart. Now um, I'm going to conclude here with the, the closing prayer. And again, uh, you can follow along or uh, listen along. Dear Father and Mother God, let your infusion and grace encompass each and every one of us. Let it last throughout our lives until we are joined with you and each other on the other side. Let us not feel alone or sick. We ask for the Holy Spirit's healing grace to enter every cell of this vehicle we call the body. Let us link our souls like a giant shaft of light that will appear for everyone in need. May the Word, the Spirit, and the grace be with you. In the name of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Arem Shem Beth Sadal Sacrivalian Ahad. And again, the translation, Blessed be this Queen on high, who is sacred to all who come to her. Amen. God bless you. Have a great month. Do a one kind thing for someone every day. Oh, guess what? <laughs> the candle ran out. Oh, it did actually melt enough. The candle blew out itself out. Um, stay safe. Wash your hands. And read Sylvia's comment on washing hands in both of the books where she talked about this pandemic. Wear a mask when it can help you or the people around you. Uh, again, you know, if you feel it's necessary, keep your six feet at distance. When you can, get vaccinated and boosted. And I'm looking forward to sharing again next month. We'll talk to you then. Enjoy. <laughs>